Okay, so day later, and I'm here ready to uh, trim the bowl I've thrown. Um, so it's it's in that nice leather hard stage, so I can kind of press on it. It's not going to bend. It's not going to give. It's not sticky on the inside or the outside. Um, you're going to run into a lot of problems um, if you're trying to trim a bowl that's too wet or too dry. So you want to really make sure that you're in that nice leather hard zone where you can press on it. You're really not going to um, have any effect on it. You know, it's got that nice thuddy sound. Um, if it's too wet, you're just possibly going to collapse the bowl or um, just gum up your tools a lot. And if it gets too dry, the clay is just not going to trim very well. And it's just going to make that um, nails on a chalkboard sound and you're going to make a lot of dust. And at that point, it is just more valuable for your time to just remake your bowls if they've gotten that dry. So before I start trimming this, uh, we're going to use a couple of different tools that we haven't used with throwing yet. And that's these two loop tools. Um, they might look a little bit different than the ones that you have in your kit, but they're essentially the same thing. A big one with a flat end and a round end. I'm sorry, a little one with a flat end and a round end. And then a big one um, that's bigger. Um, with flat and and flat ends, round ends, and a more poked end. Uh, so I'm going to use those to um, trim and shape the bowl on the outside. So first thing I do is uh, put this back onto the wheel. We have to trim these on the wheel only, um, or else it's not going to be very good. Um, and again, it's you know it's kind of like when we started throwing. We have to figure out how to center these. Um, and these can the the concentric uh, concentric circles on the wheel head with that a lot um, because you can try and match your bowl up with some of those lines to try and um, start off by making it a little easier to try and center uh, you might run into a case where um, your the, the rim of your bowl and the uh, foot of your bowl are not perfectly in line or on the same axis if that happens you want to make sure that you center the foot not the rim um, and if you find that your bowl sitting at an angle rather than flat you know it, you probably should have cut your rim to be more flat. Um, so centering this, we can spin the wheel and see how it looks. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. So let's say I didn't get it quite on center. It's off like this. Um, you know, I can just kind of keep moving this around and guessing and checking um, to try and get this the right place. Or I can do what's called tap centering, which is a little bit of the quickest, more efficient way. But again, it's like centering it takes a little bit more time and practice uh, so I'm just going to place my bowl on the wheel and just lightly tap on it until I find it being centered and if I want to if I'm having trouble checking how centered it is I can place my finger here on the side just below my foot and you know if the bowl moves away from my finger or runs into my finger then it's going to be off center you know, kind of like this, so it only hits in one spot. Ideally, my finger is dragging across it. Um, so I'm just going to tap this back to center. And again, it's not moving against my finger. And so you can see with my foot here, it's really nice and clean. You know, I really took effort to do that with a wooden knife before I cut it off. And that makes centering a lot easier. If you don't cut away that excess clay down here with your wooden knife, um, this is all going to be... Um, um, uneven and cattywampus and more difficult to try and center. So you want to be aware of those things while you're, before you're taking your bowls off the wheel. So now that I have it on the wheel, I have to make sure that it doesn't move because um, if I start putting pressure on this, it's no longer stuck to the wheel like a centered piece of clay and it's just going to slide off to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and I've just got some fresh clay here um, that I'm going to use to um, lug this down to the wheel head. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick three spots, kind of make as equilateral triangles as I can. I'm going to press some pressure down onto the bowl, and then I'm just going to press this clay onto the wheel head. It's important that I don't smear it into the bowl. I want to more press it onto the wheel head and just let it kind of um, push into the bowl itself. I don't want to be careful that I don't adhere this to the bowl. And this is another one of those parts where if your bowl is too wet, this clay is going to stick to it. We want to be careful of that. So now I'm going to start trimming this. And remember, I have to take clay out of the inside and then I have to take clay out of the outside. So I'm going to start with the outside and I'm going to start with um, this, the larger loop tool. Just because of the amount of clay here, the bigger one's going to remove more faster than the little one. 
Um, if you'd rather do it with a little one, it might just take more time and that's fine. So the first thing I want to do is think about where I want to put my foot ring. Um, you know, I don't want it to be so wide that, like right now, this is too wide. Um, and if it's too narrow, the bowl is going to be really teeter-tottery. You know, so there's a really nice curve on the inside of this bowl. And I want to mimic that nice curve on the outside. Our goal of trimming is to make, uh, remove all the clay that's unnecessary. So essentially, we just have one crisp um, wall of clay, kind of like we were aiming for with the cylinders. So I have to figure out what's too wide and what's, and what's too narrow. And so I'm just going to place a line about right here. You know, this is gonna vary a little bit based on size of bowls, how much clay you have left, things like that. So I'm gonna start trimming. Um, and when I hold this tool, um, I hold it really tightly in my hand because the control of this is really important. You know, it's kind of like tucking your arms in when you're trying to center. Um, if I'm holding the tool here or back here, it's just gonna bounce around a whole lot. But if it's really choked up in my hand, then it's gonna be really in control and I know I'm gonna um, not be bouncing around a lot. Because generally where you pick this up, there's going to be a bit of um, a little bit of unevenness. And so this is going to help with that, having that control. Um, and then my left hand, I'm just going to press, put a little bit of pressure on the top so that the bowl doesn't want to move around. Um, and sometimes when I do that, so you can either just let, leave your hand on the side there, on the top there, or sometimes I like to take like a little milk jug cap or a soda bottle cap and just place that in the center because um, it kind of pushes the pressure more evenly across the surface. And so I'm just gonna very gently start pressing the tool onto the clay. Uh, this, again, this is one of those things where we don't need to like push down really hard with our tool. Uh, I'm just letting it sort of gently drag across the surface. And you can see those really nice ribbons of clay starting to come off. You know, if your clay's not coming off in ribbons like this, it's probably too wet or if it's like coming off in small flakes, it's probably too dry. So as I do this, again, I know I need to remove so much of this clay. I'm gonna start using the point of this to articulating where my foot's gonna be. And if you can see those lines I made, how thick this foot is, that's much thicker than it's gonna be in the end, but I like to give myself a little bit of wiggle room if I think it needs to be a little um, wider or a little bit more narrow. Again, as I'm holding this really tight in my hand, I'm also helping balance myself with my left hand in case the, I find something that makes the clay want to kick a little bit. Again, I want to think about this round shape because the inside is round. I'll take a little bit more of this off. Okay, so now before I do too much else, I'm gonna take this off the wheel and check it. Because again, I wanna make sure that my outside or my inside and my outside have the same shape to them. And so I can think about as I do that, I can grab my fingers onto the rim here and feel that thickness. And then I can slide my hand down the side of the bowl. And if I start feeling my fingers um, spread out, you know, that means it's gonna be thicker in those spots. And so I wanna make sure to deal with that. But I wanna make sure that it's feeling consistent. It's pretty close. There's a little bit of extra clay right down in here, um, just before the foot. So I'm gonna put this back on. You just take a little bit more off of this curve right there. All right, so now for the interior section, um, I'm gonna use uh, the smaller tool, especially the flat side, um, to trim away in here, just because one, that big tool would be really hard to fit inside of here. So again, I'm gonna just start at that line and just trim down. Again, not using a lot of pressure. And again, if, as you're pressing here in the center and it starts pushing down, your clay's way too wet. So again, I'm gonna hold this one close in my hand as well. 
Um, this is how I hold a pencil. Um, so my hand already has a lot of memory of how to do that. So I'm just gonna hold it like that. And again, using my left hand to um, keep my right hand stable. And again, I'm really close, close as I can to the wheel head. My arms are tucked into my body. Okay, so I wanna visualize this um, as if there wasn't a foot here. You know, in theory, my inside is just one big kind of um, curve. So the outside should be this kind of dome shape if this foot didn't make it assist. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off. Okay, so that's looking pretty good as far as that dome shapes we're talking about. But now my foot, if you can see that, is just way too thick. It needs to be about half this size. Um, we wanna think about the thickness of our foot in relationship to the thickness of our rim. You know, they should be about a similar thickness. Because again, we wanna think about a similar thickness all the way through um, as a sign of quality. So looking at this from the side, I think I can take more off the outside and the inside. So I'm just gonna try and take a little bit off of both. Take away some of that. Now I've got a little bit more appropriate of a thickness here. Let me take a little bit more off. So I want to think about the foot here. A couple things need to happen. So one, you know, the height of it, height of this foot is kind of up to you. If they get too tall, sometimes they can be a little awkward. Um, but we want to make sure that they're tall enough so that when we put something across the surface, um, there's a space inside of here so that we can glaze inside of there. That's really important. Um, but then my shape, rather, I'm not going to go straight up and down and I'm not going to flare in. I'm going to just flare this out a little bit. And what that's going to do is, um, you know, if this is straight up and down or if this is um, a more conical shape, it's going to be really hard to pick this up later after it's covered in glaze, especially if it's wet. So if I put a little flare to it, flare it out a little bit at the top, then it's going to be much easier to pick up if it's wet or anything like that. Just like that. And then I'm gonna make sure again that the shape on the inside and the outside are matching each other. So I change my flare on the outside. So I'm gonna change it on the inside. <clears throat> and now the one of the last steps here is right now my foot ring is really flat on top. And so I need to change that because again, we don't want just kind of this big bulky flat space. It's not gonna look very good when everything else, like the rim's round, things like that. So to, to change that, um, rather than leaving it flat, I'm gonna cut in two 45 degree angles from the edge. So the where it sits is much flatter. So for the outside, so for the inside until I make a little point there in the center. And then I'm just gonna flatten that point down. So this is just a quick 2D uh, rendering of what I'm talking about sometimes. Seeing it in video is kind of confusing. Um, so here's a cross section of what a foot would look like. Um, and right now it's blocked off like that. So this is me drawing out those 45 degree angles. And then all of that shaded area is what's being trimmed away. And then just flattening that little point just a little bit. So the goal is to get this in the end to be pointed on both sides, in just a real small flat section in the center. And that's gonna make for the crispest, most even, um, well-rounded foot that we can get. So one more thing I need to do. Um, it's probably gonna be hard to pick this up on the video, but you'll see it once you finish trimming. There's a whole bunch of little specks on here that have, um, um, occurred from the clay being scraped away. So I need to make sure that I take a rib to this to smooth those down because the glaze uh, does not do good things over that. It'll want to pin pinhole or possibly crack. So I've done that to all of the edges. There's a few spots left, so I'm gonna do a little bit more. I can always dab a little bit of water. 
And so we've thrown these bowls really thick, right? So sometimes the clay isn't compressed well enough. So it's really important at this stage that I'm compressing inside of my foot ring to keep it from wanting to crack later on. Bowls are kind of notorious for wanting to crack if they're left too thick or uncompressed. And like so, I have a trimmed bowl. Um, at this point, you know, since we just altered this, we just trimmed away a bunch of clay. This clay sometimes can be a little bit soft or a little bit weak. So I wanna make sure that I dry this upside down on a clean board or a clean spot on the table or your shelf. Because right now, if I put it on this side, that little point is gonna just flatten um, and not look as good. Um, so we just put this off to the side. One thing I do want to make note of is that at this point, I'm gonna grab a pencil and just put my initials um, inside of the foot ring here, or I could put it off to the side here if I wanted to, um, just so that I know um, these bowls are mine later. Because if we go into the bisque room here in like a, a week or so after these are due, uh, it's gonna be full of bowls from your class and from the other beginning class, and it's gonna be really hard to tell who's who. So it's really important that you carve in your initials. Um, I use the pencil. You could use the wooden knife. Just don't use the needle tool. It doesn't create a good line. And that's it.